Welcome to Model Engineering for Beginners, Part 37. Frequently asked questions from viewers, which steam engine should I build first? I'll start with the suggestion that you definitely do not want to build one of these. I've mentioned many times before, I'm not a machinist, I'm not an engineer, I'm a musician. But over the years, because it's been my hobby, I've built quite a lot of steam engines and I'm fairly good at it. This is one of the steam engines in my collection. It's a Stuart Models triple expansion engine. And I must say, I would not ever want to build this engine. This one was built by a man called Ronnie Mall in Scotland, to a very high standard. That's because he's a proper engineer, he's done it for a living for most of his life, and he's very, very good at it. If you look at this engine, it consists of the engine itself, a thrust block, and a propeller. The propeller is not for scale, it's just to show the general principle. Quite a few viewers have asked me where I got the thrust block from. So I phoned Ronnie and asked him where he got the casting from, and he said a friend of his had a few cast. It is unfortunately not a commercial item, although I suppose it could be easily fabricated. Another question that I frequently get asked is, where do you get a displacement lubricator from? I get these from Stuart Models. And no, they are not cheap, they are reassuringly expensive. It would be sacrilege to put any other type of displacement lubricator on this beautiful Stuart Models triple expansion steam engine. When I first bought the engine from Ronnie, he'd made his own lubricator and it was perfectly fine. But as this is a beautiful example of a Stuart Models engine, I thought it deserved a Stuart Models lubricator. Displacement lubricators work by using the condensed steam, which is obviously water, to force the oil into the steam line. You've just seen me draining the water with the tap at the bottom and I've refilled it with some steam oil. I made this video when I first bought this engine from Ronnie Mall. It was new and a bit tight, but after a few runs on steam, it loosened up and it runs beautifully. I'll stop talking so you can hear what it sounds like. And here it is, running in slow motion. What a beautiful engine. So back to the subject of the video. Which engine should I build first? Well, definitely not this one. Here is a collection of popular model steam engines. A few viewers ask, can I build a steam engine without a lathe? And the answer to that question is, yes, you can. Some of the steam engines on this table are actually factory machine models and they're available as a kit of parts and all you have to do is basically bolt them together. Then you can tell people, look at what I've built, and no one can argue with it. You have built it. You may not have machined it, but you have built it. Buying a pre-machined kit is probably a good idea for some people. It's a good introduction to the hobby. Here's a good example of one. This is a Stuart Models number 10V, a very popular engine. You see them for sale all the time on eBay. As you can see, this one is very nicely machined, as you would expect for something coming from Stuart Models. Here's another one. This is the horizontal version of a number 10, and once again, it's a pre-machined kit, unlike this one. On this model, the shape of the flywheel spokes tells me that this is an early version, and this one was not machined at the factory. This is a part-finished number 10V, and it's not a factory kit. If you take a close look at this engine, you will see that it's quite well machined, but just think about it and ask yourself, how would a machine the standard? It's a really complicated shape. I do not recommend number 10 Vs or double 10 Vs as a beginner's first attempt engine. On screen at the moment are a couple of S50 steam engines. These are not built from factory machine kits. Provided that you have a lathe, a beginner could possibly build one of these with no problem at all. The hardest part is drilling the holes from the edge of the cylinder down to the steam ports. They're still a bit small and fiddly though. Another alternative is not to buy a Stuart engine at all. This is a Cotswold Heritage engine. This is a Perseus and I think it's available as castings as well as a factory machine kit. This is another Cotswold Heritage engine. Quite elegant, it's called an Aerial. It's a vertical engine with the crankshaft at the top. All of the parts arrive on a card like this and the hardest thing to do is to get them off the blister pack. These pre-machine kits are all very well but I recommend the Stuart Models Victoria for a first attempt. This is not a pre-machined kit, it's just a set of castings. Having a lathe is fairly essential to build a kit like this. As you can see by my hand in the shot, it's not a small engine. 
That's a good thing because all the parts are quite manageable. Here's the main bed for the engine, and this is what you get, a rough casting that needs cleaning up with a file first. From a beginner's point of view, this may seem tedious, but teaching yourself how to file is highly recommended. You will be surprised at the results that you can obtain with a bit of practice. In with the kit of parts, you also get these, a random assortment of bits of metal, all of which are required to build the engine. In the casting set, you get cast iron parts, steel parts, and some non-ferrous parts. When you look at this part, it's quite hard to believe that you can turn it into a very elegant connecting rod. A milling machine, or at least a milling attachment for your lathe, is very useful. You can shape a lot of these parts just by drilling, sawing, and filing. As I'm showing you these parts, the description of what they are keeps appearing on screen. This, for instance, is the eccentric rod. But you do have to chop up this piece of steel to produce the valve lever sides. This, by the way, is an extract from my How to Build a Model Steam Engine series, and it's available to view if you're a Patreon supporter. And in common with a few other videos from my Patreon supporters, it is not going to be public on YouTube. As you're watching these images on screen, you may be thinking, there's an awful lot of work to do to turn these bits and pieces into a steam engine, and it will take quite a lot of time. And during the building process, you may make a mess of some of these pieces of metal, but if you do, there's no problem. The standard pieces of bar are available from places like Blackgate's Engineering. The castings are available from Stuart Models. I made a mess of the connecting rod really early on. I drilled the holes in the wrong orientation. I'm not a good engineer at all, but neither am I a beginner, so it just shows it's easy to make a mess. The last thing that you need to do is lose interest in the job, so it's very important to make sure that you start something that you can finish. It's also worth considering the value of the finished model. A well-built Stuart Victoria will command a very good price if ever you want to sell it. For me, the best thing about a Stuart Victoria from a beginner's point of view is that the ports, from the port face down to the edges of the cylinder, are already cast in. This makes the job a whole lot easier. In with the casting set, you get all of the nuts and bolts and fixings that you need, as well as the castings for the cylinder end covers, the steam chest and cover, and the main bearings, as well as the iconic Stuart flywheel. Once again, all of these are castings and will need fettling, that's cleaning up before you machine them. I find fettling castings can be a bit tedious, but it's all part of the job. Here are the castings for the main bearings, and these are casting gun metal, a very good bearing material. Also casting gun metal is the eccentric strap. This is the crankshaft pedestal which supports one end of the crankshaft and it's made from cast iron. The quality of the castings in this kit are okay. That's not always the case though, you can get some castings that are not too good. By buying the casting set from a reputable source though, you can return any castings that are faulty. There is one word of caution I have to add into this video. Do try your best to avoid buying a part finished model. You may find that it's going to take you longer than starting from scratch. And I speak from experience. Very frequently, on the auction site that we all know and love, part finished steam engines are listed for sale. And on occasions, shortly after I've seen something sell online, I get a phone call from someone wanting me to fix the item. This is just a warning, be careful. If you want to get into the hobby, and the hobby is building steam engines, build one from scratch. Even if your first attempt is not perfect, it doesn't really matter. You've built it. And that's the main thing. You can use this to impress people. You could, for instance, as a conversation point, show a photograph of the engine that you've built on your phone to a young lady in a public place. Who knows, she may be very impressed, especially after showing her the collection of photographs you slip in a video. Think of the satisfaction you would get if she said, Oh, that's an absolutely wonderful steam engine. I'd like to have your babies. It's never happened to me, but I'll live in hopes for the future. Although at 68, I think I am possibly running out of time. But you never know. Life twists and turns all the time. Here's a slide valve and driver block. This admits and exhausts the steam via the ports in the steam chest. Here's a close-up view of the flywheel, and you can see this needs quite a bit of fettling around the spokes. Sometimes castings are very clean, but usually they're more like this. 
Whenever I machine a flywheel, I always sit and look at it and think, what a lovely thing. Especially when I look back and see how bad it was before I started machining it. And that's about it from this episode of Model Engineering for Beginners. To finish the video, I'm going to show a Stuart Victoria that I built many years ago. This was my first attempt at making a Stuart stationary engine. I made a few mistakes during the construction of it, but in the end it ran very well indeed, as you will see in a moment. All that remains is to say stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.